This is a Good Time Charlie production. On your marks, get set. I love that. Like this week might have just been just weak overall. You feel me? Like these people are not patissier style bakers. They are home bakers. And uh I feel like that that uh made for some interesting uh television, but let's get to it. It is Krim Patissier, it's a great British Bake Off podcast. I host it. I'm Terra 13 I also have other hosts. Uh, one of who is, who is not here this week, Nick Jew, is out this week. Uh, she just got back from travel, and so she was not up for doing some show to, tonight. But I do got the big homie in, in the building, Tatum216. What's good? Good evening. Um, I am just a writer of Monte Caramel. <laughs> it just makes me happy. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Let me hit y'all with this news story right quick. I think it's I think it's a it's a good bit of dumb fun that uh that, that our audience will appreciate. So you know what it is. It is Bakers make the world go round. They really do. <laughs> this week's news story I got you guys from the good people at People. Oh. Antonia DiBian, D DiBianchi is who wrote this uh, article. Amy Poehler, Maya Rudolph on baking it. Oh no, excuse me, Fred Armiston, Kristen Bell, and more to join Amy Poehler and Maya Rudolph on baking it holiday special. Oh, okay. Tis the season for baking it. Baking it's holiday special. Uh, Peacock's food competition series is returning this December with a new group of bakers and a new co-host alongside Maya Rudolph, Amy Poehler. And for the holiday special, the Saturday Night Live alumnae, alumnae, A L U M N A E? Huh. Is that the. Like the feminine alumni? Yeah. I got to see. We're going to do a quick Google search. A female graduate or former student. Wow. I didn't know we gendered that word. I didn't either. And I'm glad you said it in a way I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they're inviting a group of celebrity guests to join in a friendly competition. Uh, People exclusive announces that Fred Armisen, Kristen Bell, Nicole Richie, and JB Smooth will oh. appear will appear in the festive episode. The stars enlist their creative culinary sides and bake everything from sticky apple cake to vegan banana pudding cake. Each guest's skill set is wide ranging. While JB Smooth calls himself a cake architect, Armisen has never baked even baked before. His first attempt is on screen as he makes halakas using his mother's recipe. That's wild. Airing December twelfth on NBC, the the celebrity packed special. So why they call it Peacock? Maybe they just maybe they meant the Peacock, which is what they used to call NBC. But yeah. you can't really throw that around anymore because Peacock well, is now a thing. A whole ass network. Yeah. <laughs> Airing December twelfth on NBC, the celebrity packed special will follow Rudolph and Polar's famous friends as they bake their way through challenges in the hopes of raising money for charities of their choice. Last month, the network announced the return of season two, along with the news that Andy Samberg, who hosted alongside Rudolph in season one, won't be returning. Hmm. This is the first time Rudolph and Polar have ever hosted a series together. They're also producers on the series. Polar already has experience at the judges table, scoring scoring three Emmy nominations for her work uh, as a co-host on Making It, Baking It's sister series that challenges contestants to make crafts rather than bake goods. Yeah, you know, hey, the rest of this will be there. The, the article will be the notes. I'm not giving you no more of that. That was, uh, it was fine, but yeah. <laughs> so are you looking forward to that show? Because I, I wouldn't mind watching it because I watched the um, 
the show with um her and Nick um Nick Offerman. Yeah. Um that wasn't a bad show. I, I love me some Maya Rudolph, so I mean mayhaps. But I'll probably end up just watching the uh you know, Bake Off Holiday. does uh Christmas episodes every, every you know, every year. And we're always a year behind. And now that I got now that I got this plug on uh being able to watch stuff, I might be a year uh ahead of y'all. Yeah, gangster like that. <laughs> I, need, I need to find me some um find uh find a flaw get fix it. Find a fix it flaw get. Oh okay. Okay. let's get to it. It is the semifinals. And it's Patissier week. And uh left in the tent this week is Abdul Yanush Sandro and Shabira. I, I truly don't feel like nobody put on a clinic this week. Signature this week uh, was uh, Mini Charlotte's. Hmm. And, uh, two, with two and a half hours to make, a Charlotte is a type of dessert or a trifle that can be served hot or cold. It's also referred to as an icebox cake. Hmm. Uh, bread, sponge, cake, or biscuits slash cookies are used to line a mold. And then it's filled with a, fru- a, a fruit puree or a custard. It can also be made using uh, layers of breadcrumbs. Uh, in this case, Shabir's uh, Charlotte was uh, peanut butter. She's peanut and berries mini Charlottes filled with peanut butter cheesecake, strawberry cheesecake, blackberry cheesecake, and topped with sliced berries. Uh, Paul and Prue are concerned about the flavor combination. This puzzled me. Like, well, not really puzzled me. I guess this is one of those um, cases where it doesn't it doesn't connect to them. But I'm like, that's perfect. Or it's a perfect flavor combination. For sure, it is. Uh, it's it's weird that they uh, are so concerned that they don't understand. Uh, you know, basically peanut butter and jelly. Is you know what I'm saying? It's basically what it comes down to. Yeah, makes perfect sense to me. And uh, sorry, what else? Strawberry cheesecake, black a blackberry cheesecake, all topped with sliced berries. And Paul and Pru- like I said, we're concerned about the combination. And and like I'm just like they they played themselves on that one. It just it, that's that. I'm not saying it sounds great. You know, I don't like fruit on my cheesecake, but um, I know it to be great. I know I, I'm the I'm the one who who's weird in that situation. Well, what kind of jelly do you eat with your peanut butter and jelly? Great. Although I have I have a I have a mixed berry uh, in the fridge right now that's been pretty good. And it's got oh, the, uh, so. with the uh, the one with the with the cat on the cup uh, on the uh, on the jar. No, it's the one with like the the gingham lid, like the little red and white kind of oh, uh, uh, picnic blanket, the, the special kind. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's real nice. It's it's got some like some whole blackberries and stuff in it. It's very tasty. Yeah, so. I, I got a mixed berry, but it's the uh, the kind that Whole Foods usually sell um, mm. with the with the wild tiger on the bad boy. <laughs> uh, Sandro made uh, caramel and nutty mini Charlottes based on his mom's banana cake recipe. He's preparing two sponges, a jacond and a banana uh, sponge filled with peanut, two peanut, well, excuse me, with peanuts, two mousses, peanut and caramel, along with caramel chocolate ganache covered in a caramel sauce and a praline crumble. Paul and Prue doubt he has the time to pull it off. Uh, Abdul was going for a tiramisu, real traditional, a pistachio tiramisu, mini Charlotte's, his lady fingers will be filled with uh, pistachio, pistachio mascarpone uh, cream, a coffee creme uh, chibou, uh, which is a creme patissier lightened with Italian meringue, topped with uh, raspberries and chocolate. Yanush was going with his favorite childhood treat: plums in uh, plums covered in chocolate, plum and chocolate mini Charlottes, inspired by his childhood favorite treat. Uh, this is Jacon lady fingers filled with dark chocolate and a plum mousse. Top with hazel, a hazelnut custard dough. Again, I don't really, you know, I'm not a huge mixed fruit with my shit with situation, but them shits, that, that sounded fantastic to me. Plum and chocolate with a hazelnut custard. I was like, okay, Yanush. Although he's just been, I don't know, man. Yanush and custard ain't getting along. Feel me? Judging. Sandro, all absolutely delicious. Overwhelming. So much mm. going on. The layers are soft, but not stodgy. Except the peanut butter layer, and that's the one only one he put gelatin in. The banana sponge is really beautiful. Some of the best sponge Prue has ever eaten. Just amazing. It is like that's such a chaotic review, you know? Yes. How are you told everything's absolutely delicious, but then told everything it's overwhelming? I 
I, I maybe they were trying to say was it too rich, or uh, I I don't know. I because then um, Prue like take a piece of it with her, and she yes. don't do that. She said uh, she goes, but in fact, I'm taking some, some of this with me. It was hitting like that. It can't be that good and also be over. I, it's like their that that particular review just was bothersome to me. Is, is, is it Uchi Wally or Mike? And I and then they they wouldn't tell me so. Uh, for Yanush, looks a little untidy. Overall, sweet and pretty. Plum is nicely set. Chocolate was the the the, the these custards. Uh, the plum mousse was nicely set. The chocolate was too loose. The jacon was tough. Textures was off, but tasty. Now, so I watched this episode initially on my computer. And mm-hmm. because I'm watching, you know, some freestyle shit from across the pond, it's not the greatest uh, quality. But I'm, I'm when I watched on the big TV with Vanessa, mm-hmm. as soon, soon as I saw them damn lady figures, I was like, oh, no, <laughs> that is clearly overdone. That crumb looked not awful, but I just knew it wasn't right. You feel me? And indeed, it was not. And I was like, I'm glad I knew that. <laughs> so uh, Shabira looks pretty, quite elegant. Strawberry cream not holding its shape, but the sponge is delicious, beautiful and light, unusual flavor, so mysterious in the in the far east that is England. <laughs> they saw dodo birds on that shit. Yeah. It's like that's such a normal ass flavor combination for any apparently anywhere else in the world. Because Shabira is, is is from Malaysia and she like, yeah, we bang with peanuts over here. And I just it's wild to me. Uh they are really nice together. Creams are just not set. Uh, as for Abdul, a little messy, but looks like a tiramisu. Cuts well. Texture's lovely, very light. Coffee level's perfect. Blend beautifully with, with well-set cream. Flavor and texture, 10 out of 10. Overall look, not so good. They just thought a shit looked ugly. Yeah. And I went ahead and watched... Uh, extra slice this week and they have like comedians on there hanging out talking about stuff and it was like i disagree man and i was like yeah i I disagree as well i just don't think they were ugly i think they were i think they were fine and i don't think they want to find this week and a lot of fine is just what they got in my opinion so uh your technical challenge this week was four chocolate hazelnut and raspberry vertical tarts yeah you had two hours to do this this tech this challenge was set by prue Prue's advice, precision is a must. Three out of the four bakers are like, what does this even look like? So I already yeah. knew this is this is about to be on some shit. Um, who's the one? Who's uh, go the go one on. who already knew what it looked like? Uh, I think Yanush. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so everybody else is like, mm, I, mean, I think they kind of they 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 made they made it make sense with the, the tools that were provided for them, and of course the the uh, ingredients. And I feel like because they didn't show us the recipe this time, which they've been real adamant about throughout the rest of this season, that this 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 particular recipe must have given a lot more away. You know, what I'm saying it must have been like a little more. It it must have explained more than the other recipes that normally like a technical challenge. Up until and including semicircle of chocolate mousse, which one of us didn't get <laughs> for yeah. far too long into the concept. I was just like, bro, what did you... I, I, was he rushing? Was he just not reading? What do you think was the result of that? I, I kind of think like the pressure of knowing is between him and somebody else going home. Um, The fact that, you know... They might not. I mean, it's 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 pressure knowing you might be going home. You got to try to get this right. You you got a time restraint to do it. I mean, it's a, and then you got the mother, them two chuckleheads walking around the room looking at you. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of pressure. We'll go with that, man. Um, I, I wish I could describe you this. So basically, what this what this tart was supposed to look like. Take you must have a, a, a ring of a, a ring of short crust. So imagine just that, you know, what I'm saying a short crust that you had to bake uh, properly, and uh, then you set that ring on its side. In that ring, you are a, a, a semicircle, a half, you know, of of chocolate mousse. 
on top of that mousse, you want a layer of of a of a jelly, jelly. and on top of that, some some uh, whipped cream or creme pad or whatever, like, and these uh, little, yeah, like little uh, like little peaks. Yeah, little yeah, little dollops, of little peaks of a of, of a cream of some sort, a dessert cream of some sort, and then these little, and you, then they wanted these little chocolate disc placed betwixt them. So like three peaks, basically two chocolate discs in between the, you know, what I'm saying the the peaks of of and of. Then, uh, and then raspberry. So the raspberry and the peaks are supposed to look pretty similar. After oh yeah. All in there. Yeah, yeah. So so was it was it cream raspberry, cream raspberry, yes. or was it okay? And then then, but some people was like cream raspberry sitting on top of it or what? I don't know. This was a chaotic ass bake, sort of, except for one of the bakers. It's, just it's seen very, it. it's very intricate uh, for the time you have. Like you got to do a ring mode, you got to yeah. do the uh, a chocolate that won't fall, and then in between all that, you got um, they had like crumbly sand cookie, like they'll sit in between there. Then, yeah. then you got to make four of them, and then like, um, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Go ahead. No, no, that's the point, right? That's tactical. We know, you know, saying we just kind of chat up. So the yeah, the yeah, Ab- Abdul's fail. Um, it was it's like I think twice. It's just been situations. Where I was like, man, just just let them sit there at the end of their bench and not not bring it to them because yeah. um, if that shit fall, it's uh, it's it's over for them. But they didn't seem to make us think about it having fall, fallen over. So, I think they seem to be more more in, in align with what 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 was what with the bakes. So and you you can't do that no more after you accepted Janus. I'm um, only bringing seven egg rolls up there, bruh. So he talked he talked about that on uh was it this week? That was last no, that was last week. That's what I was like, yeah, because you know he was on he was on uh the extra slice and he talked about that and he goes the reality of it is is this one time they asked me for twelve or something and I made them twenty four. I'm just probably I probably just fucked up and didn't fry the the fry the, the the extra egg roll. He goes, I thought I did, but I probably most likely I did not. And I was like, that's real of you, man. Just you know, cop to it and keep it moving. So, uh, Yanush, good dude. I <laughs> uh, just probably gave away uh, who what's what, but I guess the show art does every time. So, uh, <laughs> judging for Abdul, who was up first, the rings were overbaked. The mousse tastes good, but far too stiff. Shabira looks neat, good color, uniform, not a moose. Everybody's moose, well, no, no. Three out of the four bakers' moose was just not right. It was more yeah. a ganache. They kept saying it was more of a ganache. Basically, it solidified in a way that was unpleasant to this particular operation. They didn't want a ganache, they wanted a moose. And then uh, um, Sanjo's looks super grainy. Let's see what they, what did they say about it? A bit of a mess. Pastry was too thick. Jelly was not set. But they said his pastry was good, but doesn't look good. Yeah, basically, his shit was just a mess. You know what I'm saying? And and that's just what it comes down to. Um, turn this phone off. And fire back up. Yanush underbaked, but the mousse was correct. It's like so, okay. Again, the only person who came close to it was Shabira in that it looked right. Tasted pretty good, but the moose wasn't right. Uh, so ranking was Sandro uh, came in last here. Uh, pastry far too thick and just a mess. And they really were a mess, y'all. If y'all would have saw it, y'all would have been like, for, so for one, <laughs> Sandro in his mind said, cut the moose in half. And that is exactly what he did. He took a circle of moose and split it right lengthwise down, the, down across itself. So basically, you would have, he would have had two circles of, of moose, but what was requested of them and in the instructions, right there in the instructions, and eventually it, the, the light bulb goes off. He needed a semicircle. He needed to cut the circle in half across, not you know lengthwise. And finally, that bell rung, but then of course he's running behind because he's been fucking around trying to figure this other stuff out. His jelly wasn't set. Yeah. And so you have to you have to lay this thin layer of jelly across that cut section of this the semicircle of chocolate, and his jelly was just falling all off of it, uh, and and it's just it, it just it was bad for a man who came in, in first two technicals in a row to to just basically come in last. It was just, it was a tragedy. Uh, 
Yadush came in third. Moose, his moose was the best, but his pastry was underbaked and soft. Also, what happened with Yadush is that he didn't. Uh, the rings are uh, the dough needs something to support it, just like a, you know, a a bit of a not necessarily a blind bake. In this case, you need us us to support the ring structure, and he didn't. He just threw the motherfuckers in the in the <laughs> he threw them in the oven. Notice they were falling. Was like, oh, let me put rice in there. But you can't put rice in there because rice is just going to stick to the damn bakery. You have to yeah. use like a, a a coffee filter or something, you know what I'm saying, to keep the rice separate. And then the rings will keep their shape. And Shabira did that. And, of course, that's why hers looks so nice. Uh, Abdul's slightly overbaked and his chocolate was a bit tough. Like I said, uh, only Yanush got the, the, the mousse correct. Shabira, pastry, pastry beautifully neat, had the precision requested. So Shabira, Shabira, as you just heard, uh, basically one signature and and one technical. Do you see where this is going? Oh, but it does it, does it? <laughs> Showstopper this week: a croquant, four hours to bake. A croquant is a pastry made with almond paste, sugar, and egg whites. They want it to be a minimum of sixty centimeters, which is almost two feet tall. It's just shy of two feet tall. A croquant is kind of a Swedish wedding cake situation. Uh, but there's also a Norwegian croquant because I looked as I was looking up trying to figure out what what a croquant was so I can explain it to you, the listener. And uh, Nor- Norway has a croquant that's a completely different thing. So the Scandinavian countries are very interesting in there in, with stuff like this. So, but anyway, uh, basically, if you will, imagine uh, a type of gingerbread made into designs because <laughs> that's basically what it comes. That's what a uh, croquant ends up being. Uh, Sandro is making where it started and how it's going is the how what he what his uh, title of his croquant was. It's an ambitious design dedicated to Africa and the UK and his mom. Uh, apparently, Sandro was uh, born in the in in Africa. Uh, his mom brought him to and, and I think his his sibling I don't know to the UK. A single mom taking care of her kids in the UK. You know, he he said basically opened their arms to uh to her and and he felt he, it touched him. Uh, he was going to go for two flavored doughs, a rhubarb and custard, and a raspberry and pistachio. Uh, the design was supposed to have Big Ben's clock face, a map of Africa, the London Eye, which, if you don't know, is a Ferris wheel, giant Ferris wheel in England. Uh, you, you, it be it show up in all kinds of movies, so you've seen it. You just maybe not didn't know that it was called the London Eye. It was all going to be decorated with sugar work, uh, marzipan, because marzipan is kind of a requirement of a croquant, uh, and intricate piping. And uh, Sandro's pretty good with his with his uh, with his decoration. Always has been. Uh, Shabira was <laughs> this was so special to me. I just thought it was pretty dope. Yeah, Made the, the boys, um, you know, they were supposed to be in bed. They were coming out like, look, damn, look at that. Uh, <laughs> she like Emery was like, that's pretty. I'm like, yeah, she did a great job on it. Yeah, uh, the DNA in you is, was her croquet using the classic almond dough. Shabir was going to make 50 individual biscuits flavored with rose and pistachio and decorated with icing and marzipan supported with only thin biscuit rods. She said she failed three times in practice and only got it right the fourth time. So this this was definitely uh, pretty uh, ambitious herself, but they didn't seem to fucking shoot her down like they did Sandro. I don't like that. Just point that out to y'all. Uh, Abdul. To the stars, Crocon. He was making a rocket-shaped Crocon that, unlike the other t- others who were rolling out and cutting dough, he decided to pipe his dough over a template, which made uh, not necessarily easier because it's still it was still a lot of work, but it made for uh, his, his design work to make a little more sense and be a little more easy. Uh, his dough was lemon flavored, decorated with pistachio and orange marzipan and sugar glass, and uh, all that was held together with uh, caramel. Yanush was making what he described as Brighton Pride. It's a croquant uh, with almond and rose flavored uh, dough, uh, a pride flag themed base, pink and blue hearts for the trans community, black and brown music notes for the minority communities. And uh, basically, uh, I wrote my notes. If he's going out, Yanush is going out on a statement. And I was like, very cool. Again, on the extra slice this week. The guy was like, I don't think that represented Brighton Pride very well because it was missing people in jean shorts and doing this and doing that. And I'm like, mm, don't make a joke of this. I think you, well, no, I think the guy who's making the joke is himself gay. Yeah. So 
as gay people making jokes to gay people, and I'm like, I was not amused by your your comedy, but I don't understand it. <laughs> so <laughs> y'all, t- them two seem to giggle, so they got because they got yeah. the bit. So I'm like, all right, fine, <laughs> sure thing, buddy. <laughs> uh, this was a sight to watch. Um, like I said, Shabir made a DNA helix with cookies. That's a brilliant. It's amazing. Uh, Abdul made it. I mean, yeah, the, the, the general design was supposed to be a rocket, but it didn't really look like a rocket. It almost looked like a temple from like, uh, like, uh, uncharted or something. You know what I'm saying? It had a very cool look to it. <laughs> um, yeah, I knew it just had a vibe. I just don't think, I just don't think it matched up with the, with the, with, with uh, everybody else's, you know what I'm saying? That's just how good everybody else was this week. Uh, Shot, Sandro came through with a dope design. He just burnt his caramel, and it's like, bro, this this was not the week to be off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to come in on game, and I just I just don't feel like he came in on point this week, and I hope he does next week. Uh, Abdul looks magnificent, very clever, good miskits. Marzipan is good, terrific job uh, for Shabir. Absolutely wonderful. The design is amazing. The color incredible. The flavor spot on, but the baking varies. Uh, some were fine, others were not because it's just so many of them, and so they were all and they were baked in batches. Some of them were perfectly baked, others were not. So it tastes good, but for in some some instances, it's just overbaked. For Yanush, the bottom was neat, which was where he baked the pride flag. Uh Slightly, uh, it gets sl- slightly more untidy as you go up. Delicious flavor, a bit overbaked at the top, underbaked in the middle, and perfect at the bottom. It's just such a weird. Again, it's the same thing Shabira had. It's like you're baking in batches, and some of the batches just turned out better than the others. It's very weird. Uh, Sandro, a bit mad, overdone caramel. The tang of the rhubarb is good. Like Paul ate that, was like, what is that tang? He was really taken aback by it. He's like, oh, that's rhubarb. Like, yeah, I'm like, okay. So uh, I'm telling you right now, that is probably what got Sandro over this week. Uh, more more raspberry than pistachio. Pistachio, yep. Said yeah. that he couldn't taste his pistachio at all. Yeah, every part is doing the thing, though. It's crispy on the outside. It's chewy on the inside. Just a little all over the place, which is what Sandra was this whole episode. Just like, I don't know, man. Just like, buddy, what what got you in your head? But I feel like Sandra is definitely going to walk away with this with a, either a, a cookbook or a, a damn show somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Which I dig. Uh, surprise, surprise, your star baker, in, in which it had to have been, was Abdul. Had... We go on to the finals with Abdul, and he not been Star Baker this week. I would have pitched a fit. Hmm. Yeah. I need. He he had to win it. Um, I feel like he deserved it, but at the same time, barely. Yes. Again, I don't feel this was a very successful Patissier week. None of what they made is what, like I said. So, so we go back to signature. Sandro's mini Charlotte's were massive. They were the size of a, a, a one year old cakes that you give at Walmart for free. Yeah, that's not mini. Nothing about that is mini. That is a whole cake. It's like no, no, that's just wrong. And so that that was like I said, that was was not quite hit like it was supposed to. Uh, technical. Just, I mean, yeah, Shabir kind of got it. To, Shabir got the look right. But like I said, the chocolate wasn't on point uh, and like so forth. Everybody, like I said, messed up there. And then here, even here in this event, like I said, Abdul really did kind of come through. Like I said, his look, like I said, if you if you get a chance to check out the episode or at least just some some pictures, his really was like, okay, that is something, that is something amazing. And Shabir's really was something. That, Shabir's was just so intricate that that's why it stuck out to me. And also it was held together with cookies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like to, to use biscuits as your support structure is amazing. But otherwise, like I said, this was like it's just a so so weekend. I was like, I don't want a so so weekend semis. I need people coming through, and I don't think people really came through this week. Yeah, I kind of feel like 
if I mean not that you can do it, but if you flip flop the week Maxi went home with this uh with this week, that yeah. seemed more like a semifinal than this one. That yeah. one was a was a was a nail biter. This one was like not necessarily boring, but it wasn't as the stakes the stakes didn't seem high in this episode. Yeah. Oftentimes like uh you get to like the the conference championships in the in, in, in the NBA. And that it, it'd be like, man, that was the finals. Cause the finals end up being like, you know, a four game sweep or something like that, or a five one or something like that. Yeah. Well, well not not five one, but you know what I mean. Four one, you know what I'm saying? And 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 I feel like that's what it was in this. The quarterfinals was 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 hitting and the semis is just kind of like ho hum. What's the like I said, I love these people, I love these bakers. I this one probably one of my favorite group of bakers. They all I just I dig them all, you know what I'm saying? And and they're they're all interesting people with interesting tales and, and so forth and so on. So I very much enjoyed this season in that regard as a as a as a very pleasant people show. But this week's baking was not up to snuff for in my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Uh your baker who was sent home this week was Yanush. And uh though she is, cannot join us tonight, I, I did ask Nick, oh, let me fire my phone back up, to uh Send uh send me a little something something if she could about uh the homie Yanush going home because you know Nick loved her some Yanush but also was like <laughs> we we all were pretty much like in agree with it Yanush should have went home basically three weeks ago <laughs> but he, he he got over on it so uh, let me get into my phone and uh, we'll get that played for you. All right. Went on home where he should have gone like three weeks ago. <laughs> he had such an interesting run. He started off so strong and then just kind of deteriorated towards the end. It's really interesting. I am very excited for our man, Abdul, who finally won Star Baker in the last opportunity that he could win Star Baker. I still feel like Maxi should be there. there. I don't... I can't fathom how they're having this this finale without her. Uh, overall, a really good week. I thought they were unnecessarily hard on my boy Sandro, and all of a sudden, they want to count the technical when he didn't do well. Funny Uh-oh. that. Anyway, I hope you all have a great show this week. Uh, look, I, I one I had, I hadn't even listened to that whole message, so that's that's very funny that. Uh, that she noticed just what I noticed as well. And that is that they was on some bullshit on man Sandra this week. It's very noticeable. And, um, can, can you, I kind of, I kind of feel like sometimes like w- when they have had strong bakers that sometimes they know they can do better and are harder on them because it doesn't seem like, They've really been harsh with uh, their criticism with Abdul for pretty much anything. I've never seen them really be like um, kind of firm with him as much as they are with Sandro. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know how to take that either. Like, what's, what's going on there? What What is it about Sandro that made y'all think y'all need to uh, father him like y'all have been? Or like I said... Uh, you know when she when, like when Nick said like when she called him boy and I like I I did I did not take it poorly, but also like what what makes you think you need to mother this man as opposed to the other bakers? What about him has you thinking you need to you know <laughs> parent him as such? It's weird to me. It it, it, it it sticks out of something odd. You know what I'm saying? So cannot call it. Won't call it. Uh, as as I told Anthony before we got started tonight, I have already had these final spoil for me. I'm super salty about it. But Anthony said, like Anthony said, the journey will, will, is 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 all a part of it all. So I get to find out how they arrived at uh, what they arrived to. I had last week's episode spoiled for me too. No, I had yeah yeah last week's episode. This uh, this this one we're talking about now spoiled for me too. Same thing. Looking for uh, to write show notes and was like oh there, there you go. And this week I was just looking for news. You know we do a segment a news segment and. Of course, the news of the night is who won uh, Bake Off because Bake Off airs the night we record in uh, in merry old England. So 
Alas, I'm aware of things that I wish to not be aware of quite yet. Although, like I said, I told Ed, I was probably going to watch the episode tonight anyway. So I was going to find out tonight anyway. So yeah. I'm, just, I'm just a little ahead of it is all. Um, next week is the final. And uh, that being said, what, if anything, are you looking forward to? Um, I'm just looking forward to seeing, like, actually what kind of week it's going to be. What what are the banks going to be? Yeah. Um. I'm looking forward to seeing, um, you know, I, I like that, you know, they gather everybody back up, um, all the bakers to and see who they want to see who uh, win. And yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it'll be bittersweet. It'll be our last episode of, of recording this too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, we'll, we, we're going to come back, uh, hopefully earlier than like September when, when this show comes back, because we're going to hopefully have, uh, great American baking show uh, show up at some point in the meantime, but you are correct that this will be it, it for us for a, a, a bit. And uh, that's always a, uh, a little bittersweet. I, I, I love doing this particular show. Plus it's like the only show I get to do with Nick Jew. You know what I'm saying? And so that, 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 that adds its own little bit of specialness to it, but I'm, I'm excited for the, for the finals. Um, oh, something I think that y'all would find interesting. So if you know, uh, when you win Great British Bake Off, you're basically given a, a sweet ass crystal cake plate. It's gorgeous. It really is nice. That's what you win. You don't get dough. You don't get like whatever, like you would in America. You get a plate, but it's a lovely plate. Don't get it twisted. It's really nice to have that on my shelf would be kind of sick, you know. When they do the extra slice, basically there are they have a full audience that's kind of sitting further back, but they also have audience who came through with bakes, hmm. and then those bakes are judged. And the winner of that gets a sweet uh, Great British Bake Off extra slice wooden spoon. And it just looks kind of <laughs> sweet. It just looks kind of dope. And, uh, that's, and it's a good time to be at there. So that's fun and interesting. Um, like I said, this is the first full episode of that I watched with the, for this this week. Because I don't know. It was the same eyes. And I just kind of wanted to know how Yanush felt about uh, leaving and so forth and so on. And they, and they do a nice little sit down interview with them on that. And I enjoy that. So. A, a, a great time to be had there. Uh, I, I'm very excited for the final. So I just, I love this show and uh, it, it is always a highlight. You, you, it's what, you, it's what basically you end up going into, uh, I guess Thanksgiving and, or whatever you're know saying. It, it can be a lovely holiday discussion uh, with, with your family uh, next week for on, on Thanksgiving. You'd be like, y'all watching bake off. That's why you should be. And you can tell them why they should be. And uh, you can also tell they should be fucking with us because we kind of dope. And that's just real. The poll asked me, was that an egg roll or a spring roll? <laughs> <laughs> 75% agree with us. That was an egg roll. And uh, 25% said it was a spring roll. And I'm going to assume they was, I don't know, some from somewhere else. <laughs> if you voted that was a spring roll you and, and, and you hear and you hear this, you let me know. Because... Uh, we disagree, but I'd like to know your your reasoning because that's the type of person I am. <laughs> I don't know what this week's poll will be. I, I guess you know what at this point it should be. Uh, who do you think is going to win uh, uh, series thirteen of the Great British Bake Off? And I will give you the three options, and you will you will let let us know who, uh, who you think is taking home the crown. And uh, up until then, uh, our missing our missing person this night is is one Nick Jew. Send her some love. She's fine. Don't get it twisted. She's just, you know what I'm saying? She's tired. She, you know what I'm saying? She's on the, on the traveling. So she had to, she got, got home and, and needed some rest. And that is okay. Jet that lag. Is, for sure. For, well, I mean, no. Well, I guess it's, yeah, I guess it's an hour difference, right? We'll see. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Tatum 216. All right. Good night. Can't wait to see you guys next week. That's what's up. I am Taylor 713. We will catch you next week. Get your bake on. Hey, what happened to you? You used to be blue.